Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and I'm standing outside a house flip that a lot of you thought we should have torn down. <laughs> we'll show you the video and probably splice in what it looked like before when we first bought it. It was pretty rough, pretty bad, and a lot of you said, hey, just tear it down, get rid of it, start from scratch. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of doing that because there is one that we tore down in the last year. So we very, very rarely tear down houses. I don't think it's worth it for the most part. But in that case, it was worth it. So I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of tearing down properties and building new, and then the cost of it as well. I think a lot of people think, oh, you just tear down a house, right? It's almost cost you nothing. It can be very, very expensive tearing down a house. So we'll talk about that too. Um, of course, check out investmore.com for much more information on flips, rentals, being an agent, all that great stuff. Have a free book on there as well. And um, lots of books on Amazon too. We love the likes, so if you haven't hit your like button yet, that helps us. And then any comments you have, we try to respond to as well. All right, so this house is staged, ready to sell. We had some issues. <laughs> Talk about another video with uh, getting a main electrical line replaced, so that's really, really delayed us. But this house we paid $100,000 for. So it was pretty cheap, one of the cheapest houses we bought in a long time here in uh, Greeley, Colorado. And it needed a lot of work, right? Had a really weird kitchen, really weird living room, only one bedroom, and people were like, just tear it down. Just tear it down, start over from scratch, or put a modular manufactured home up, you'll be ahead of the game. Well, the numbers don't really agree with that. Um, we'll show you a house we did tear down here. And when we tore down that house, you know, you don't just go in there with a sledgehammer and magically knock the house down yourself. Right? There's a lot of things you have to go through. And the first thing I don't think a lot of people realize, if you tear down a house, you've got to get that process permitted and go through quite a bit with the city or county to tear it down, have it legally recognized as being torn down, and then build something new if you're going to build something new or sell it as a vacant lot. So on that house, it was a two-story old 1800 house, like 1880s. Um, maybe 1,500 square feet total, it wasn't big. We spent $26,000 tearing it down, I believe. And that was with, um, it already mostly gutted inside, like almost all the sheetrock was gone. Most of the flooring was gone, the kitchen was gone, bathroom was gone. That was like bare bones tear down. And most of that cost goes to the company who tore it down, right? They have to bring in you know, heavy equipment, tons of dumpsters, there's tons of trash fees, lots of labor. They've got to make sure everything's safe and taken care of and the power's disconnected and the water's disconnected. Um, all kinds of things you have to do to tear down a house. It's not as simple as swinging a sledgehammer. <laughs> I wish, or I would just do it all the time. Well, probably not, but. Um, so that was an easy tear down and it cost us $26,000. If we were to tear this house down, we're probably looking, oh, I could literally see it being $40,000 or more just to tear it down. And people are probably like, well, it's a smaller house, why? Well, when you tear down a house, you've got to get it tested for asbestos, lead paint, and um, mold. So you can't just tear it down and throw all that stuff in the dump. The city or county makes you get it tested by an approved company, which can be very expensive just for the testing itself. And this house, we never had it tested, but we we're 90% sure it had asbestos siding and we stuccoed over it. We can, you know, there's no problem doing that. Asbestos siding is not harmful. It's not disturbed. We stuccoed over it, kept the asbestos siding in place, didn't disturb it. So if we're tearing it down though, we'd have to have an asbestos abatement company come in, remove all that asbestos, do all the special stuff they do. And then, um, that would cost probably five to ten thousand dollars honestly here's a new electrical problem we're trying to fix right here the new main line we're waiting for so it can be very very expensive to tear down a house and that assumes there wasn't you know if there's lead-based paint you have to go through a special process to get the lead-based paint removed if there's mold you have to go through a special process to get the mold removed as well and it's not as easy as just whipping down the house calling it good and building something new now i should say it's different in every state and county and city where you do stuff. 
but most places will make you have a permit, go through a process to tear a house down. There might be some places where it's not a big deal. You might be able to get away with it um, and just do it. <laughs> Nobody says anything. But when you go to build again or when you go to sell the land, there might be some issues or some problems that pop up if you do that and you're supposed to have permits and all that done. So what about the costs and everything else to build new? Okay, well, we probably spent about $50,000 remodeling this property, which is quite a bit. But if, you know, it's like 680 square feet, um, let's say we're going to build a new 680 square foot house. It would probably cost us $150 a square foot to build from scratch. Um, once we tear it down, you know, you might find foundation problems we don't know about. You might find other issues you don't know about. You might be replacing sewer lines, main water lines, all kinds of new things that you didn't even think about before that could add on top of that. And you just don't know how much it's going to be until you get into it and start that process. So we could have $40,000 in demo costs. If we're lucky, a hundred, I mean, bare bones build a hundred thousand dollars to build this house new, probably much more than that, but we're just going to assume it's really low to make my point here. <laughs> so you've already got a hundred and forty thousand dollars into the house in order to sell it for 280, maybe if it's brand new and we already paid a hundred thousand dollars to buy it. So we've got $240,000 in costs, not including the financing costs, selling costs, closing costs, all of that, um, where our basis for buying it for $100,000 and spending $50,000 on a model is $150,000. So <laughs> 240 versus 150, maybe you sell the new house for a little bit more money, $20,000 more, but it doesn't make up for the $90,000 in extra costs you have to build a new house. Now we could also go through the scenario where we build a bigger house or put a modular on. Well, here's the issue there, right? Our lot goes to that alley right there to this fence right here. And from that fence right there to the fence right there, the setbacks are so small on this lot. You know, you have setbacks. You can't build right up next to the road or right up next to the alley that you probably can't put a modular on here. If you did, it'd be very small, maybe like 800 square feet, <laughs> maybe a thousand, maybe. So then you have a thousand square foot modular manufactured home, which is probably going to cost you a hundred to $120,000 because you need to make sure it's HUD certified, built the right way. Um, then you've got to pour the foundation for that, which what, 10, $15,000 to prep it and make sure it's all done right. You've got to put the manufactured on, home on, install it, purge the foundation, go through a process with the county, city to get all that done. So you're probably still looking at literally $140,000 to $150,000 to put a new modular on or manufactured home. It's probably not worth as much as a stick built home. Might be a little bigger because it's bigger. Maybe it evens out and you have that kind of similar cost, but you're still looking at spending probably close to $100,000 more by tearing down this property and building something new or moving in a manufactured home than you would taking the existing property and fixing it up. So that is why for the most part, we never ever tear down houses just because there's so many extra costs. So why did we tear down the other house? That seems pretty stupid, right? Well, <laughs> that was on a commercial lot, an acre commercial lot. The house was horrible, much worse condition than this. It would have needed almost probably a hundred thousand dollars in work to make it livable. It had structural problems and issues. So there's much more expensive to, to repair that one. And then the land, because it was commercial, was actually more valuable as a vacant lot than a fixed up house because it's on a highway. It's a commercial area. Not many people are going to want to live there, but a lot of people want to have a business there. So, uh, based on those circumstances, it made sense to tear down the house to have a commercial building. So there are cases where it makes sense to tear down, to build new, um, but just not as m often as a lot of people think. And with houses, it usually doesn't make sense unless, unless you know, you're popping the top, 
you're building really expensive houses in really expensive areas, you know. Hey, if you're if you're building properties in urban areas with 800,000 to a million dollar homes selling and you can buy these little houses for cheap and tear them down, sure. That makes sense. You have enough profit room. You've got big expensive houses that will sell. You're literally paying for the lot and um, there might be a, a huge shortage of lots there. So it makes sense when you add in the cost of demo versus buying another lot. However, for little houses, properties that aren't in high price ranges, it very, very rarely makes sense to tear down and build all the way from scratch, especially with lumber prices as high as they are. <laughs> you want to save as much as you can. All right. Um, so I hope that hopefully that kind of clears it up and um, gives you an idea of why we don't ever tear down stuff. Don't even think about it hardly ever. We've saved much worse houses than this before and done okay on them. Um, and it, like I said, let, leave us a comment. Let, let us know what you think. We love it when you like our video. Have lots more resources, lots more videos of our other flips going on. We have like 10 or something like that, a bunch more rentals. We always show videos of lots of advice videos too. So um, check out investmore.com. Like I said, lots of free articles and free book on there. We love the support you guys are giving us on our channel. So thank you so much for that. We'll be back with many more videos coming up here soon. If you have ideas for new videos too, we love to hear those as well. All right, take care and we'll be back.